Yo, what's up, guys? It's another episode of PB and J. I'm here with Brian, Jesse, and Patrick today. What's going on, guys? Hey, what's up? Hey, what's up? Yo, how's it going? We all have a lot of energy. It sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> I had a really long weekend, so but you guys probably did too in your own way. Yeah, just just not as cool as Brian's. Yeah. <laughs> okay, your, yours will be cool next this coming weekend. Yeah, I'm serving. I'm conserving my energy. And and where is it that you're going this weekend? Comic Con, me oh, and Jesse. Yeah, tomorrow. Yeah. Tomorrow. We're nice. this weekend. Tomorrow. Yeah. Tomorrow. 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 We're heading down tomorrow and then just getting cracking. So jealous. So jealous. <laughs> You're gonna hear like fifty percent happiness and have fifty percent unhappiness about the Comic Con. <laughs> <laughs> but we all uh we all had a big uh big day yesterday, right? Game of Thrones premiered. I loved it. That was a great episode. Uh, that was a good premiere. One of the best of all of them. I, I really liked that one. So, what, what did you think of the uh, of the episode overall, Brian? I liked it. Um, it's a pretty good setup episode. Kind of like hints towards what's going to happen for the rest of the season. So, I'll just talk about the, the opening scene where you know Walter Frey's having his his dinner thing, his banquet thing, and you know like when the scene starts, he's sitting still, so it looks like he's still dead, but then he starts talking. And then you wonder if if uh, it's a flashback or not. And then um, you start seeing people get poisoned. And um, I don't know if you guys remember, but like you know, whenever someone gets poisoned, like they always say it's like a women's kind of like method of killing people. Yeah, so, yeah. So for him to be killing like people by poisoning them, like then I start thinking, oh, that's probably not him then. And then, but I still didn't know. I, I wasn't thinking that it's Arya because it's been so long. So it was really cool when she like, you know, revealed herself and showed that you know she she killed everyone, pretty much wiped out the entire like Frey family, you know. And she you know she mentioned something like you know if you kill a Stark you gotta kill all of them, and she goes ahead and does the same thing to the Freys where she pretty much just wipes them all out all in one shot. So I thought that was really cool. Yeah, the the beginning scene it kind of confused me also. It started off with Arya killing uh, Walder Frey. And then I also thought it was a flashback. Um, what changed me, as soon as they introduced the wine, I knew they were going to get poisoned, and that's when I realized it was Arya. I, I thought that guy played it really well. It sounded like him, but it was subtly geared towards Arya as well. You, did you guys notice the subtle change? And then all of a sudden it was in your face that you knew it was Arya before she even took off the mask? Yeah, so um, like I, I read on the Internet like other people noticed that the actor acted differently. So, like, you know, to, to let you know that it's not really, like, Walter Frey. Like, that was how good, like, the actor was. But I, I have to watch it again because I, I didn't really catch, really catch it. So I don't know if you guys caught it or not. But, Pat, it sounds like you caught it. I, it. It was very subtle. I just thought something was different. And then that's why I thought it was a flashback at first. And then I realized it. But I knew something was wrong. Something was different. I, I, I just thought, yeah, he did do a really good job. I, I think what it was for me is that he was standing and talking the whole time. And Walter Frey never does that. Cause he's, right, he's like... Old guy, yeah, right? he's yeah, he's old and, and yeah, he's old and feeble. So he's always sitting there uh, berating everyone. And this time he wasn't. He was standing, and he was actually being complimentary to his family. So that's when I was like, okay, well, this is this isn't him. It's Arya. And then when he told it, he tells uh, his his cupbearer, not you. Uh, full disclaimer: In my opinion, this is my first full episode of Game of Thrones I've seen. I've never seen a Game of Thrones fully on. So um, I was watching with at a viewing party with a bunch of other nerds. And... <laughs> Um, but it's true, that's the entire time work. So, um, so you, you, when you, you first see it, it says, you know, what happened in the previous one, I saw this guy's neck being slashed. So when I saw it, I, I was the same thing. as like, oh, they must be doing a flashback to cover something that they're going to show in this episode. And I kind of, like, I, I don't remember who said it was, like, Patrick or something. When they were pouring the wine, I kind of already thought, oh, that's it. These guys are all dead. Yeah. Like, the wine aspect of it. And plus, not only that, he's admitting it. I know that I don't really do this. This is like, why Why am I being so generous? And um, a bunch of the other uh, nerds were commenting too, saying, yeah, this is so off, off, off character. Why is he doing this? You know, they, he must be giving them bad news or something like that. So I kind of thought something was going on, and then the whole Mission Impossible scene just happened. <laughs> Mission and, Impossible. And, yeah, <laughs> I, I was like, at first, like, obviously, I don't know what this character is. So I was like, we we go yeah you're Tom Cruise Ethan <laughs> yeah yeah I was like holy shit I was waiting for the music to start but now it 
was a really cool scene. I, I, I had to give I had to give it to up to uh, to the show because I've never seen an episode, and I was like, oh, this is a really cool scene for me to actually enjoy the rest of the episode. That's the rest of the episode is kind of cool too. But um, like I said, it, it, it kind of like you kind of saw it. Like it was kind of coming with the wine, and then it, like like um, John said when he told the girl he insulted her, which I understand. You know, in those times, it's normal. But the way he did it, you could see he was protecting her. And then, you know, he, he, it makes sense because obviously he wasn't trying to kill any of the innocent women. At the same time, someone needs to go and stay alive and, and you know, give her props. Like, hey, I just killed the whole the whole family. And I guess that's what it was, right? Everybody there's family. Yeah, yeah, that's a, the, whole, the entire house pretty much. Yeah. Yeah, what's cool is that I read uh, online that they filmed that scene. It was going to be... It was going to be on during the middle of the show sometime. But after filming the scene, they saw how strong the actor, David Bradley, how he did such a great job that they decided, no, he did such a good job. We have to put it at the beginning of the show. Like, that's the way to, that's the way to kick off this episode. You lose this cat? Hey, guys. Uh, I guess uh, they're here. So. <laughs> <laughs> Patrick, thanks for joining us. Thank you. That was awesome. <laughs> I love this show. It was great. Uh, and I'll see you next time. <laughs> Later, dude. No, because this is the same guy from Harry Potter, so right, uh, he's the big uh, cat lover, right? Yeah, he's the uh, like he's pretty much like a hall monitor. Yeah. The kids are all in their rooms and all that stuff. Yeah, the same actor. Yeah, I like I like the episode, but uh, what I was hoping for was something a little more, um, I guess, epic, like something like something really impactful. I guess is what I'm trying to say because there's only seven episodes this year, so I figured every episode has to count. And I, I, I mean, I like the episode. It was a great setup. Like, it, like everyone got set up right at the beginning. That everyone got into their places, and you know, stuff's gonna go down later on. But I was hoping for something really, really impactful to kind of set up the rest of the season. And I guess the at the end of it, when when Danny does arrive onto Westeros, that is a huge deal because she's finally there. It didn't come like so. We know that that's a big deal, but there was something. It was like felt like there needed to be something else. It was like something was missing, and that's what kind of kind of bugged me about this episode just only because there's only seven episodes and they all have to hit um they all have to feel important uh the rest of the way yeah i agree like um it's kind of like um when i told you about like sherlock when you know they only have three episodes and that one season i forget it was like season three or something and they just they pretty much just wasted one episode to do a fan service episode yeah so it's like <laughs> it's like you only have three episodes and you just waste one <laughs> just to do that and yeah, it, it's a little bit annoying, but yeah, it sets everybody up, right? Like you see the tension with John and uh, Sansa, and then and then like the Hound with with um, those guys that that can't be killed. But then that scene where like Arya runs into that camp, and there's like Ed Sharon there, he's like singing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what are like who are those guys? Are they just like passing by? Or I think so. I think they're just. Headed? I think they're just Lannister men who are just passing by, and I think that whole episode just showed. It was just to show Arya that, you know, they're not all bad, right? right? She hates the Lannisters. She hates all of them. But it's like, you know what? These guys, they're just soldiers. They're just, they're just doing their job. They're not, they're not bad people. They're just, that's just their job. And she got to see like, oh, you know what? Maybe I shouldn't kill everybody. She's still going to kill who she needs to kill, but not, not be all like, you know, Terminator and just smash all of them. Uh, a question on that. Uh, when the soldiers asked her, what, um, what are you, what are you going to blah, blah, blah for? Did I catch that right? I wasn't sure because somebody else was talking near me. Did she say, I'm going to kill Queen? Yeah, she said she's going to... Yeah, she wanted... She she told him what she was going to do. She wants to go kill Cersei. But they're like, ah, little kid, that's so funny. And she just laughed it off. Like, yeah, yeah, I'm just kidding, but not really. She's the last one on her hit list, right? Or was there, like, someone else? No, I think that's I it. Mean, I think that's what she's the last she one. Finish, yeah, she didn't finish off the Hound, but, you know, she thinks she killed him. Yeah. So, yeah, I think... There's only one more person on her list. And I think uh, she actually took him off the list. There was an episode like a season or two ago where she was reciting the names and she doesn't say the hound. Okay. So, so she took him off the list and then <clears throat> she thinks he died fighting Brienne. So he's off the list. But yeah, I think Cersei, I think that just leaves her. I think she got everybody else. Yeah, so it was a good surprise to see like Jorah. Like he's, he locked himself in that little sky. I guess it's sort of like a hospital. Yeah. Um, and you see his arm sticking out. You see the like the rock. Uh, his his arms like fully, like those rock. I, I forget the name. They're like those rock men. Yeah, grayscale. Grayscale. Yeah. 
and they didn't show his face, so you don't know how bad like. Yeah, I want. Yeah, I wanted to see if like one of his eyes is shut now or something. Yeah. But yeah, I guess at the end, at the end of last season, he, uh, Danny told him, uh, go find a cure and come back. So I guess he probably went down to the Citadel to look for something, and then they probably just locked him up because because that's like super super contagious disease. So they probably just locked him in there until they can figure out what to do with him. So the one thing about that scene or the previous scene before that was too much um, repetition of what, uh, I don't know the guy's name is, but what his job duties were. Oh, Sam. Uh, so, yeah, it was. That was funny, dude. It was, it was funny, but it was like, okay, the All third, right, just... fourth time would have been, a, been an okay, the tenth time, I don't know. So, you, so you're saying you got, you got, you got, you're saying you got sick to your stomach like a little baby. Yeah, I was eating pizza at the time. So I, was, I was a little bit disgusted. <laughs> so it was just a little bit like, too much. It became like a little song, right? Like it, it started to have a, have a rhythm and everything. Yeah, yeah right? <laughs> <laughs> I, I felt bad for it because it, to me it seemed like he's went there to learn. Right? Yeah, so yeah. Many... That's the whole thing is that he was sent there to learn how to fight the White Walkers. John sent him there. But now you see this is what... He ends up like that's just his daily routine, and he even tells the the archmaster, "Hey, I, I have something important here to do. Like you guys have me cleaning bedpans and and stuff, and he he needs to figure out a way to kill the White Walkers. So he ends up just doing it by himself, just stealing the keys." Yeah, maybe it's maybe it's one of those wax on wax off things. It's like you're not seeing the importance of cleaning shit. <laughs> maybe one day cleaning those pans will save you. So that was a good, like I said, good episode. Uh, it's definitely setting up the rest. I, I just wish some more stuff had happened. So stuff, more stuff we could talk about, something big. But it was more, a lot of exposition, a lot of moving the pieces into place. And then the, I'm hoping episode two is like, they really start kicking things off. So Brian didn't get to see Game of Thrones until a little later than the rest of us because he was flying back from Anaheim because uh, he went to D23 uh, on Saturday, right, Brian? Yep. Yeah, how was it? It was cool. It was really, um, really tiring, but it was fun. Yeah, I heard uh, you said that you, you you got in line for the movie panel at like 12.30 at night? Yeah, so I pretty much landed at around midnight. No, no like like 10.30, 11 p.m. Um, at LAX, rented a car and drove over to to Anaheim. My friends got a hotel like 10 minutes away from, from the convention center, so we just met up there and then walked over just to check out how the how many people were there already but there was like already a lot of people getting inside so yeah so i just started camping out um i was it was more of just to scout it out but we just brought everything just in case like we would have to stay there yeah and that's what we did so we've been there we, we stayed there from like 12 30 until 9 30 and that was when they started letting people in so it was a pretty long long night did, did you guys were you guys able to get any sleep i know you're inside right they put you inside that hall yeah yeah which is pretty cool. Like, they're not leaving you out in the cold. Yeah. It's very organized. And they taped off the lines and everything in the bottom, like, on the lower level. So once you get in there, they give you a wristband for the section that you're at. And you can walk in and out, like, within that area. I mean, you can even go outside, but just don't stay out too long. Right. Um, but, yeah, it's, so everyone just, like, brings all their sleeping gear. Um, but I didn't really do that. I just had a little stool. So I was, like, sleeping on a floor, which was not very comfortable. So... Next time we'll be a little bit more prepared. Payback, right, Jesse? Right, I was thinking about that right now. <laughs> where, was, where was your lovely uh, borrowed uh, sleeping bag? <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of cool that they had you inside, though, uh, because then you wouldn't have to really worry about you know it being cold or super hot like it was um, down here. Yeah, it was like it was inside, so it was fine. But I mean, they had the AC on, so. So people brought blankets and and this little like inflatable thing that they were sleeping on, it's like a banana shaped thing you would twirl around. I've never seen before, but apparently it's a thing now. Like you just inflate it by like just running around and like getting air in there. Inflate <laughs> doing that. Like a hammock. Kind of yeah, but it's like an inflatable one. Huh. Yeah, you said they uh they um capped the line really early too, right? They did. So by like two o'clock. No, I mean, once I once I got to figure out, like, um, what the situation was, like, I told my friends, like, you guys better come over here soon. Like, don't wait too long. They were planning to come over, at, like, at 4 or 5 in the morning, but I saw people slowly trickling in, and they're getting the wristbands. They're thinking, like, they can just, like, 
show up at four and just cut into the line. But um, fortunately, they they showed up around two, and they camped out with us. Yeah, but by like four thirty or five, they they just cut off the line. So that's it. Like no one else is getting in to the lower level. And so people outside, like um, they they were waiting outside like at six in the morning, and they said it's already cut off. Like that's it. You can't even try to like there's no standby line or anything. Like they oh, they already built a standby line. Um, like at four thirty or five in the morning. Yeah, that's that's time when I went. I got there about six thirty, and uh, got yeah. right got right in line. And I don't remember there be I don't remember there being wristbands. I remember just getting in line. But I was there was still a lot of space behind me. So I would say probably like I think by like uh, seven thirty eight a.m. is when they were like, okay, that's it. Um, no one else. Mm -hmm. But man, it sounds like this year they they topped that. Yeah. The, so the wristband is for your the section that you you want to be at. So section so it's like sections A, B, and C. Uh, B is the middle, the prime location where you're like right in front of the stage, like you know the middle section. And then A and C are like the the side ones, like the ones that you you sat in last time. Yeah, there. yeah, I was on the side last time. Yeah, so of course the B one is a popular one, so everyone like tries to camp out in that area. Yeah, but still it, it filled up pretty quickly, so. I'm guessing next time, like, you just have to just start lining up around, like, 10 or 11. And the thing is, like, different, that's different from Comic-Con is it's only for that one panel, like, a two-hour panel, and people are camping out, like, for 10 hours for it, you know, versus, like, Comic-Con, like, you camp out for Hall H, you're there all day. Yeah, you know, yeah. Big... yeah so they kick you out, you're saying, then? Are they, you set the room uh, after each one, or? Yeah. Also because there's nothing after there's, that. Yeah, there's like, there's nothing after, right? It's just like, okay, oh. thanks, you know. And then the 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 um probably the next big panel was the was the uh, park panel probably, right? Right, but that was at three. Yeah, so like so four or five hours later. Yeah. Where, I remember doing that I remember doing that last time too. We went and saw the, the big movie thing and then afterwards we just kinda I remember I walked back to my car to drop off the uh the Star Wars poster we got and then we went back, kinda walked the floor a little bit, then went to the, the parks panel. And was there a big line for the parks panel or not really? I don't know. I didn't go to that one. But oh, I saw okay. people leaving with like Disneyland balloons and they got a pass to see the new Fantasmic. So they like they have people giving out wristbands for that so you can walk over to the park and watch it. Oh, like okay. They, they allocated like an area for you to view it. So that was pretty cool. So what did, uh, what did you see in that panel, the, uh, the movie panel? Like Disney has like five different movie divisions. So they have like the live action movies. So that's just like well, like Disney, and then there's like Disney Animation Studios. So that's like Tangled and their other like Frozen maybe, and yeah, Frozen and things like that. And then there's, there's Pixar. So that's three, and then there's Marvel and Star Wars. So there's five. So for that movie panel, they talked they talked about the live action movies, Star Wars and Marvel for for two hours. But a, the majority of the of the panel was was on were on their movies. They spent a, probably about like an hour and a half talking about all their new stuff. And they had like a two-year plan similar to what they show for Marvel where like they fit in the movie titles for each year. So it's easy to see like what when the movies are coming out. Yeah, so they showed a little something for each one. I saw that uh, they had a big announcement for Aladdin, right? Your, your big movie? Yeah. So the, the guy, like he made a comment like, yeah, there's a lot of rumors out there that are some are true, some are false, and some people are laughing because like we knew he was talking about Aladdin. <laughs> like they didn't have anyone cast for for the for Aladdin, and then the guy just and then they just show that we already casted a guy and like they started production already. So the only thing that was true, I guess, from what he was saying, was that they they got Will Smith as Jafar, no, a genie. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that rumor on, uh, on on online somewhere over the weekend. I'm like, this has to be BS. <laughs> right now we brought it up. <laughs> I mean, come on, dude. Robin Williams is dead, man. What do you want him to do? Hey, what we use the guy that they used during the TV show? He, uh, the Castaneda guy. He's the one that. Uh, oh, Homer. The, uh, yeah. Come on! <laughs> it's, it's like, does he can't pay Homer to go ahead and? Well, I mean that's the thing, right? Is is he's not a big name. He, you know, you wouldn't be, you know, you wouldn't put up on the, on the billing. Dan Castellanata, aka Homer. You're gonna like that's not gonna do it. You gotta put. But he's the one that did it. What he did, 
Uh, yeah, he did the um, yeah, he did the the, the DVD mo- or the I guess the VHS movies, and he, I think he did like video game stuff and other things. But he did, yeah, he played Genie a lot. Yeah, exactly. It's it's it's. We talk, I mean, come on. I'm gonna hear Will Smith. Come on, I'm just gonna think it's summertime. It's not like he's not doing a voiceover, so I don't know how they're gonna do it. I don't you think know they're gonna, you think they're gonna do like Genie. um, you think they're gonna do like mocap? I don't know. So, like, that's the thing. Like, I don't know how it's gonna look. It could look really cool or really, really bad. Wait, so. you're seeing you're seeing it's live action. Yeah. It's live action. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> They're all live action, dude. They're all of them. The Lion King. Making um, everything live. Action. All of them, dude. Like I saw, um, they announced that uh, Hugh Jackman's gonna play Scar. Oh yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, Lion King. Yeah. So so okay, so this is like live action where instead of. It being lions, it's gonna be people, or like, or is it, or is they gonna be dressed up like as in the like as the the theater? No, it's like, like gonna... it's like Jungle Book, where like all the animals are all like CGI, but they they look real and they talk. It's just like that. It's also directed by John Favreau, so it's the same thing. It's just that he he went from Jungle Book to Lion King. Yeah, I think Jungle it... Book I can understand because you know I don't know. <laughs> I, <laughs> Did they... It looks good, man. <laughs> yeah, you, you saw footage, right? It, like, it looks yeah, sick. Yeah, they showed an opening scene. It looked, it looked really good. So, don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're, we're gonna see a, a a blue genie. Did we do see that in Pee Wee's Playhouse well, already? No. Okay, so now you're talking <laughs> about that. Yeah. Dude. <laughs> no, I'm I'm assuming this genie is gonna be CG. He's a look. He's gonna look a little better than that guy. From uh, Pee Wee's Playhouse. Yeah. I like the fact that John picked up on my reference. Dude, I used to watch. <laughs> Dude, I watched the shit out of Pee Wee when I was a kid. Lawrence Fishburne or Larry? He was yeah. Larry Fishburne. Cowboy something. Yeah. Cowboy Larry, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's funny because when you look at like back in the days, it's like, wait, that's Lawrence Fishburne. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is his break bake. Break. The Matrix guy was found on Pee Wee's Playhouse. Yeah, yeah. See, that's where you knew he's like something's wrong here. <laughs> this isn't right. I gotta look into the Matrix. So, uh, so they showed you like, uh, like a piece of uh, a ladder. No, they didn't show who they casted. Just to squash all the rumors. Like that was it. They and then they moved on to another movie. And what was the next movie? Um, I forget. <laughs> I have to like bring up the list again. <laughs> <laughs> and did, did they talk about like uh, the? Because I know on Friday they had a Pixar panel, just Pixar. Yeah. Did they? Did they get? So they did they get really in depth into Pixar on your guys's panel, or not really? They just kind of went over it no, again. No, they didn't even bring it up. Like everything was covered on that one, so they didn't show any. Like, I guess they call it the animation panel. Like, so it's a combination of like their Disney animation and Pixar movies. Before, like last year or the last two years, two years ago, they called it like Pixar only, like a Pixar panel. But I think this year they mixed in all the like anything cartoon related they put into one panel yeah because I, I mean since then they've disney's had a you know few big hits right frozen moana wreck it ralph yeah those are, are doing a tango too i thought they were doing they're, a sequel to tango too they're doing the tv like i think it's a tv series but there is a wreck it ralph too it's called uh he breaks the internet or something Wreck-It yeah ralph breaks the internet. <laughs> <laughs> i like wreck it ralph wreck it ralph was cool Hey, do you do you remember when we saw something like before Wreck It Ralph came out, like through Pixar? There was there was this panel we saw. I'm not sure if it was uh, WonderCon or at Comic Con um, about a, a movie about 16 big games. 16 big games. Yeah, yeah. Like so, it, it made it it made it look like uh, it. I can't remember if, if this evolved into Wreck It Ralph or if it maybe it evolved into Pixels, the movie with uh, Adam Sandler. It was about video game characters or what? Well, they were just just uh, just announcing it like, oh, we're gonna have a movie. It's been based on uh, no, not not sixteen bit. I'm sorry, eight bit games. And so they showed us, you know, that the, the movie's gonna be based on just eight big eight big characters. And then all of a sudden, like the year after, Wreck It Ralph came out. So I'm wondering if this had something to do with it. Oh, maybe. Yeah, maybe they maybe it uh it um grew into Wreck It Ralph. Yeah. Okay. I just sorry threw us off that. Yeah. So what did they um what did they show for uh was that was that all the, the Disney stuff and then they got into like Star Wars? 
No, they spent a lot of time on this movie called A Wrinkle in Time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. Do you know that? Do you know that story? Yeah, I read the books, like, years ago. I, I was elementary school, I think. Maybe, maybe barely middle school, but I, I remember those books, yeah. Okay. So it's about a girl. I don't know too much about it, but she, her dad, like, who was played by Chris Pine, he's like a scientist, and I guess he gets lost in time or something, so she has to go and save him and then she runs into like three characters who are like mrs who miss there's like three like one speaks in riddle the other one can tell the future and i, I forget the third one maybe if you remember the story you can you can explain but it's it's played by like uh reese Witherspoon, manny kling and oprah so they all three of them showed up at the panel the funny part was um you know the so the, the for the panel like they give away posters for that movie so, you know, Oprah did her thing where she's like, like, you get a poster, you get a poster. <laughs> that was, that was pretty funny. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't, I don't remember the story, really. I, I just remember, yeah, the dad gets lost in time. He figures out time travel, gets lost in time. The daughter is a genius like him. And so she goes to find, you know, she gets her his technology and goes to try and find him. And then if I remember correctly, she might have had a brother who was really smart. And then um, they had two like twins that were younger than them, but they were normal. Like they weren't, they were just normal kids. They weren't geniuses, I, I think. But man, it's been so long since I read those books. I really couldn't get into the details any more than that. Yeah, uh, but it looks pretty cool. Like it looks like it's going to be like a three to five part series if it does well. So. Yeah, yeah. The books, I know for sure there was four. At least, yeah. so there might even be more than that. I don't. I said I don't know. I lost. I lost count of it when I got or lost track now, of is it. Is this animated? Is this animated or live action? It's live action. Were there any uh, other movies we missed, Brian? Yeah. So the other live action ones um, is a remake of Mary Poppins. It's not a remake. It's like a sequel, but it's with Emily Blunt. Is that her name? Yeah, Emily Blunt. Yeah. Yeah. So she's uh, new Mary Poppins and. The story takes place 20 years from the original movie and has a director from who did like a few of the Disney movies like Chicago and some other musical type movie. I forget which one. Um, but yeah, she didn't sound too confident about her performance because, you know, she she's pointed out that she's not going to be able to top Julie Andrews. Yeah. Um, so same thing like what Jesse was saying earlier about like Genie, right? Like Robin Williams is, is like a really good genie. So like. Will Smith is on. I, I don't know. I, I don't see it. See Will Smith doing a good job as a genie. But same with this one. So it was like she was really like she sounded like she was really unsure about doing a really good job. But they showed the trailer and it sounded. It looked. It looked pretty decent. I mean, I, I never watched the original Mary Poppins, so I don't know like how good it was. But um, when they showed the trailer, they had a live orchestra play the music along with the trailer. So that was pretty cool. Not um, not not in the in the hall, right? It wasn't orchestra with you guys, just in the. No, it was in the hall. Like they were on the side. Like, oh damn! Behind the curtain, they open it up. It was like a full orchestra. Oh, that's cool. So, yeah, it was cool. And then uh, another movie they did what they showed was the Nutcracker. So they, <laughs> they're doing like their their own version of Nutcracker, and then they had this guy called Little Buck. Little Buck, I guess he's like a. So he came on stage and he was like doing his his dance to. The Nutcracker stuff. So it was pretty cool. So we live performances and orchestra for these movies. I'm sure about. So I guess if you're really into ballet, then I guess it would be cool. But and then really quickly they showed a picture of The Rock. They're gonna read. They're gonna do a movie on the Jungle Cruise. No, oh, really? I didn't. I didn't hear about that one. The Rock in it. Yeah. <laughs> Dan just put The Rock in anything, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did they Did they show a lot or not really? No, it was just a still shot of him, like, on a boat, like, as if he was, like, the tour guide for the Jungle Cruise ride. So they're going to make a movie around that, I guess. Oh, that's funny. I didn't hear that. Yeah, I didn't hear that at all afterwards. <laughs> Did you, have you seen the, uh, have you seen the trailer for Jumanji, the new one? Yeah. Yeah. That actually looks really funny. So, uh, yeah, it's not like the, the old one, right, where it was, like, a board game, and I, I didn't watch the original one, so I don't know what. Oh, you haven't seen the original Jumanji? No. Oh, man. Not, not that it's a good movie. It's okay. But just that everybody's seen it. Yeah. No, not for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this one, like, uh, the football player, he, be, 
becomes like Kevin Hart's character. And he's, yeah, like, yeah. A lot, like a lost a half and all that. Yeah. It's pretty funny. And the girl becomes Jack Black. Yeah, so, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then they show the live action stuff. So, like, Jenna Lennon already, the King. They're also um, doing a live action for, um, it's going to be directed by Tim Burton. So, it's, so they show, like, the, the set of the circus and stuff. It looks really cool. That was that was uh, yeah. Dumbo. That was Dumbo. You said. Yeah, Dumbo. Yeah. Let's see. I think that was it. I think I covered everything for for their live action movies. I, I mean, I, I might have missed one, but yeah, but it's fine. But yeah, I covered all the all the big ones. So after that, they went into Star Wars. Um, they didn't really have anything new to show, but the director Ryan Johnson came out and, and um, he introduced um, Gwendolyn Christie, and he joked that. He joked about uh, asking her about like Game of Thrones swor- spoilers, but she wouldn't tell me tell him anything. <laughs> and then, and then um, Daisy really came about, and the guy who played Finn, what's his name? Uh, John Boyega. Yeah, so he came out. He was standing next to uh, um, Gwendolyn, and then he was talking about like this like big action scene that he had where he had he was fighting the sil- the silver stormtrooper, and then like. You know, they turned to face each other on stage and, like, they did a stare down. And it was, like, when Conor McGregor and um, Floyd Mayweather had their first stare down the first day where, where like, um, McGregor was, like, five inches, like, taller than him. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, yeah, in this case, like, she was, like, a full head taller than him. Like, <laughs> humongous, so. Yeah, I, I didn't I didn't hear any, really anything about the Star Wars movies uh, and, like, any information. So, I guess they really didn't show anything, huh? No, they just show, like, a three three minute behind the scene kind of video. I mean, it's on the internet. It doesn't show anything new for the story. It's just like showing um, how they shot some of the scenes and and how they're joking around, how they're like just hanging out and stuff. But nothing new, like in terms of trailers or anything like that. Um, and then, so they didn't spend too much time on Star Wars, probably like 10 minutes total. Um, and then the last part was uh, for, the, for Marvel. So with Marvel, they, you guys will you'll see you guys will see this uh, on Saturday, but they showed their new Marvel Studio uh, logo. It's pretty much like where the word Studios is. It has a number ten. Yeah. So they replaced the I and O with the, the number ten. So it's pretty much like ten years since the first Iron Man came out, and this is like the whole collection of everything that's happened since then. Um. So I I think all the mo- new movies coming out next year will show that that logo i guess yeah um, i think next year i out. think next year will be what black panther infinity war and then like captain marvel or something ant-man right ant-man yeah that's right ant-man, Ant-Man too yeah ant-man the wasp okay so like um yeah so kevin feige comes out he introduces josh brolin and yeah he looks like he was in pretty good shape i guess um for the for the deadpool movie as as cable right yeah yeah he's um, getting buff for cable yeah I, mean, I don't think he's getting buff for Thanos, but yeah. <laughs> um, so then, like, you know, so he's like, I like, he's a, talking like he's a tough guy. Can beat all the Avengers. So then, like, um, they introduce like two at a time, each one of the guys that are going to be in the movie. Well, but before that, like, um, they were saying that they were at the halfway mark from last um, last week, last weekend. So they're still filming um, in Atlanta. Um, but they flew over like on a small plane a few few people to come over and say hi and stuff so you know like of course when they say it's small like they, it's not really small right so yeah, yeah, yeah. so he starts starts by bringing out um like i forget who the like who came out first but um it was like two at a time and then so it was like batista dave batista and then the, the girl plays like um what's her name like gamora's sister Oh, Nebula. So, uh, Nebula. Yeah, the actress. Uh, Karen Gillan, I guess. Yeah, yeah. And then um, Don Chato, and pretty much like all the characters. And then later on, they became like 10 people. And like, and then, and then like, you would think that that's it, right? But then there's more. And then after a while, there was probably like 16 to 20 people on stage. So the funny part was like when Dave Bautista came out, Dave Bautista's going to beat up Thanos, right? He's like, nah, Drax ain't shit. <laughs> um, but you said there was a, a couple guys missing, right? So, um, so like Robert Downey Jr. comes out in the end. 
and he, you know, he, he just comes out and he just says hi to everyone, and then he's like, well, like show it, pretty much like he wants to show that he wants to show everyone the trailer. But before that, like um, you mentioned, you know, who's missing, right? So Chris Evans wasn't there, um, Paul Rudd, and a few other people. Like it wasn't everybody, but it was it was a lot of them, almost all there, you know. So I'm guessing they're all going to show up at Comic Con this weekend. So you can you can let me know who who's there, but. So so then they roll the, roll the trailer. So John, I guess this, this is where you don't you don't want to hear anything. No, yeah, I don't want to hear any. Yeah, I don't want to hear this stuff. Showed a lot of stuff. Yeah, because I mean, if <laughs> I'm gonna see it on Saturday, so if I hear about it now on Saturday, I'll be like, oh, I already know this. Like I want to be a so shocked. I'm gonna be reading this. Yeah, yeah. Don't tell. Yeah, that's pretty much what they're gonna show on Saturday. So I don't want to hear any of that stuff. They might show something new, right? Like they, I don't think they show the same thing twice. Like, cause like when. The first Cap movie came out. I think it was the first one from four years ago, or maybe it was the second one. Like they showed two separate things from Comic Con and D twenty three. Right, right. So, yes. So they might show you something different, but man, so I can't even talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> so Jesse, you don't know anything about it, right? You didn't read no, about I'm reading, it. I'm reading, I'm reading online about it. I'm, I'm, someone actually describes the whole trailer, so I'm kind of reading it on it. Right now, like me, I mean, I don't care. I mean, obviously, see, I'm still gonna enjoy it, but yeah. it looks like a kick-ass trailer, according to, to no, the description. Yeah, recently. it's really cool. So, but um, that trailer showed a lot of, I guess, like spoilers or or how things like really come together. So, man, I want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because the trailer you saw, I'm from I'm looking at this. It ties in the movies we still haven't seen, like uh, Thor. Right, and, and um, I guess maybe Black Panther. I don't know. I don't see anything about Black Panther in this, but so well, they, they show um, Cap, and I guess this is not a spoiler, but he has a, he's like a full beard. So. Like terrorist? Is that what he is? So I, <laughs> yeah, I yeah. don't know if that hints where he. Makes... There, there, there was some stuff like that in the comics before, yeah. where where uh, um, where he had you know lost his uh, he lost his. His um, title as Captain America and kind of went rogue and yeah the full beard and stuff like that yeah that that was that's kind of some, some other comics there was a big story about that in the nineties who took the mantle uh which time <laughs> yeah, I mean because I know Black uh, uh I can't think of his name right now um the guy who shoots the arrows I can't think of his name right now Hawkeye there you go Hawkeye yeah there's oh, yeah there's a there's a few there's a few times where Cap was like stripped of his of his shield and his title and stuff so there's been a few replacements. Characters that aren't in the movies, yeah. as well as characters who are in the movies. So yeah, it's happened a few times. But yeah, I will. Uh, I really uh, when we do our post Comic Con uh, uh, recap, we can compare what we saw. And then we might actually still see that same trailer you saw, but at Comic Con, I mean, it's not to say that it's a bigger event than D twenty three because you know they're the they're they're the studios for them. But it might be that they give us something different. Like okay, well we know you have heard this of D twenty three. Here's this trailer, and then here's another trailer just for you guys. Because they try to they try to have exclusivity for Comic Con. Yeah, um, and it's gonna be, it's gonna be a long panel too. It's gonna be like ninety yeah, minutes. Yeah, you guys are getting a two hour panel. Like, yeah. When they got to Marvel Studios, they, they only had like fifteen minutes left. Um, it was just to bring everyone out and show that. Oh man. Yeah, no, well, that's kind of what they did with the uh, the X Men one. Remember when they did the uh, Future Past? They uh, they brought everybody out, but they didn't. Really have a chance to really talk to all of them because there's so many of them yeah and then there there was already other i think there was other oh yeah you had the wolverine right you had the wolverine uh the Deadpool, yeah so Doctor. just yeah just wasn't a lot of time yeah so yeah so i'm guessing the the marvel one on saturday is going to be way way more inclusive like i'm pretty sure chris evans will be there it's like he's like he's never missed he's never missed one and he's probably promoting some other movie Maybe some like lovely movie, you know, like he has to do his action Captain America and then he has to do his like uh, other piece. Yeah. But um, one thing I didn't mention, and I'm not sure if it's just uh, maybe, maybe they just didn't do it during G23. Did they say anything about Carrie Fisher? Yeah. For the Star Wars. So, yeah. Um, I think she was still alive when they filmed most of the scenes. Um, but I think there were some parts where they had to CGI her. So I, I don't, yeah, I mean, they didn't really talk too much about that. Yeah, I know. Yeah, she was pretty much done, but there was some small minor stuff that they had to finish up. But she was almost done. Yeah, 
won't be the first time they see GIR. Yeah. <laughs> And Brian, you were saying before that you didn't know Ryan Do- Ryan Johnson was uh, directing. No, I didn't know. I mean, I would have been more excited if I knew. I thought it was still um J J Abrams. Oh yeah, yeah. Then uh, for everyone out there who knows, Ryan Johnson got his start in Breaking Bad. He did a few of the big episodes, probably some of the best episodes best episodes of Breaking Bad with Ryan Johnson. Yeah, and he also did that one movie with um, Joseph Gordon Levitt. Yeah, uh, Looper. Looper, yeah. Yeah, that's a cool yeah. movie too. Jesse, since you just finished Breaking Bad, uh, the director of Star Wars, he did the episode, the Fly episode. You know what? I was, I, it was funny because I was telling my nerd group yesterday. I finally finished uh, Breaking Bad yesterday, and they were like, because they were like, why don't you see Game of Thrones? I'm like, because I was watch, watching Breaking Bad. I had, I had told my fans out there that I was going <laughs> to catch up. Uh, better call Saul and. And when somebody says, "Oh, I think a lot of people don't like the Fly episode," I thought that was a really, really cool episode. It was, it, it, I mean, it was pointless to the storyline. I'm sorry. It, if you catch it out of out of scenes, like if you just picked up, then you would be like, "I don't get this. Why? Right, right. What's the big deal?" But I think it gives a, a whole perspective into his psyche. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, like you just know, Walter is fucking, fucking crazy. Yeah. <laughs> And, and it's not crazy like, oh, I got to kill this fly uh, because it's bugging me, but because he has no control over it. And that's that's what Walter needs to have. That's why he fucks everything up, because he loses control. Uh, and he wants to have control. That was, I don't know. To me, um, uh, Walter, Walter White was like the character that, that you just hate because he just fucking things up. Yeah. Like, he's so badass at the same time where it's like, holy shit. <laughs> yeah, and he also... Um... He also directed the uh, second to last episode, uh, Breaking Bad, uh, Ozymandias, I think it's called. Yes. Yeah, he did that one too. So like two of the strongest episodes uh, were Ryan Johnson. So now he's now he's doing Star Wars. So I'm pretty pretty happy with with that. I mean, he's he's super talented. Yeah, I'm kind of looking at some of his other stuff. Uh, like he said, Looper. That's yeah. One of his other movies. I think he might have did. Some... Yeah, and I think he might have did some X Files stuff. Oh, back in the day. Back in the day, yeah, because that's where. Um, well, that's where Vince Gilligan started. Vince Gilligan started as a writer for X Files. Uh, don't see it on the uh, as a writer because he did something for uh, Terriers. He did one episode of Terriers. Yeah, I was hope I was hoping they were going to show some more Star Wars stuff. Like, you know, just especially since they're not going to do anything at Comic Con. I was hoping that D twenty three they would get into it a little bit more, but I guess not. Yeah, they briefly talked right? about what. It's just too early, right? I mean. Not really. They're almost. I think they're almost. They're done filming. It's yeah. Post like production now. Yeah, it comes out in December. Oh, that's right. Yeah, they briefly talked about the Han Solo movie, but they they didn't show anything or, or bring anyone out for that. Aren't they having trouble with that movie? Movie. Well, they're still sticking to the schedule, um, so we'll see. So that was the uh, probably the end of the panel, right, Brian? Like after the Avengers. Yeah. So it ended on a really high note. Like after they showed that trailer, everyone was super excited and then that was it they didn't they didn't mention comic-con or anything but i guess like for for people who know like um it's gonna be much bigger next like this coming weekend so yeah it's too bad i won't be there but you guys you guys can let me know what what they show with with uh spoilers it's fine did you guys get any swag did you get like a poster or anything just a, a wrinkle in time poster that's, that's it, it. uh no, words, no, no man no, 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 yeah. Yeah. Last time I got that Star Wars, I got the Star Wars poster last time. It was pretty cool. Yeah. So what'd you guys, uh, what'd you guys do afterwards? What'd you guys go hit up? Pretty much just to, like walked around the, the floor. Yeah. There's like, like everything you do there, you have to wait in line. I mean, it's not as bad at Com- as Comic Con, but there's still like two or three hour um, lines just to like go to a store to shop. So it's pretty crazy, and everything is like it's 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 like with uh, wristbands. So you got to show up early, get a wristband if you want to, like an autograph from somebody or go to a panel but it was still fun like i i was still able to get everything done that that i wanted to do in one day um but yeah it's like d23 is something i really recommend to everybody so john hopefully you can go two years like when you come back again in two years since um they're gonna show they should be showing like episode nine right to wrap up yeah yeah trilogy. it should so, yeah it should be uh if they keep it up yeah so it's gonna be a big one, and they'll be past the Marvels like ten years. So I don't know if they're gonna talk about their next 
this is like so after 10 years will that be their phase two or uh phase three phase that would be the end of phase three hey, did you get a chance to check out the star wars land the model i did yeah i even took some pictures of it and i put it on our instagram page so yeah you guys check it out it's uh p b and j show on instagram yeah i gotta look at those pictures it's pretty cool I, I like how it looks like star wars land it's not a theme park right you're not right. in you know it, you look like it looks like you're there but yeah, the, yeah they have like the forest and then the millennium falcon and all the different locations and it looks like a real planet as opposed to just yeah. walking down disneyland and you see all the stuff but you know you're in a theme park but star wars yeah. land looks like you're actually on another planet yeah they, they do a really good job where like when you walk in like they're not going to have another building sticking out to kind of take you out of it so they're very good about like once you're in there you feel like you're in it yeah you're not going to see like a roller coaster like behind it that's not related so in the model there's like a giant um, millennium falcon and i think that's a attraction where you can go in there and i'm not exactly sure what type of ride it is but you're kind of like in a cockpit i'm guessing it's going to be like star tours yeah that's what i think i think it's gonna be like a vr type yeah yeah and it yeah it's, it's gonna be really cool I'm, I'm like so that opens in 2019 so everything is going to be like ready two years from now so the next d23 should be pretty exciting by the time like that rolls around like the new star wars land should be open and then the last like episode nine for star wars and whatever else they have going on and i heard too i don't know maybe i don't know if you saw anything but uh i heard that you'll be able to buy a ticket just to star wars land you don't have to go to disneyland Did oh, you... I, didn't, I didn't hear about that yeah that's what i heard I, yeah i wasn't sure if that's confirmed or not but i heard that you can be able to, to buy the t- uh, ticket separately yeah, and it just, it just means that it's going to be even more packed. Yeah. Because everyone's going to be like, I'm not going to Daisy Land, I'm going to Star Wars Land. Yeah, and then I also, also heard um, that they're opening a resort in Orlando. Uh, it's a Star Wars hotel. Yeah, I, I saw pictures of that. that. That looks really cool. So does it look like, like, is it a hotel where it just has pictures of Star Wars stuff, or it actually looks like you're on set? Like your room would look like a room in the cantina or something? Yeah, so I, I didn't see any pictures of the room, but the lobby looks like you're somewhere in, like in a Star Wars universe, it, like the front lobby. I don't know about the rooms. Yeah, that sounds that sounds really cool. So they, they might have a restaurant that's themed towards that, and I think um, in Star Wars Land they're going to have that cantina, like you know that's uh, that's in Star Wars where they have all those like random alien characters. In right, stuff. right, yeah, man, that's gonna be so cool. I want my hotel room to be equipped with the chain and the princess t- tied to the chain. <laughs> I will pay the part of Job of the Hut. <laughs> <laughs> and you can all go ahead and bring me food. <laughs> I think that's the VIP package, dude. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of looking at the line uh, they are talking about the, the Star Wars hotel. And it says each guest gets a storyline. Oh, that's cool. So they just dropped the bombshell, D23. Uh, all employees will be in costume and in character. Each guest will get a storyline. It's meant to take place on a spaceship. Windows will only show space. That's kind of cool. That's cool. It says, in other words, it's like Westworld. Or, you know, as close as anyone can get. Plus Star Wars, minus all the sex scene and home murdery stuff. <laughs> so, Is that good or bad? Name. Is that good or bad? I don't know, but it's only going to be in um, Walt Disney World, uh, unfortunately. Yeah, I know. I've never been to Florida, but it looks like I'm going to have to go now. Right? <laughs> <laughs> like, I wanted to go to space, and I don't have enough money for SpaceX, so we'll just go to Orlando. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's what's cool about D23. They have a ton of cool stuff, but uh, really only need to go the one day, right, Brian? You don't have to get the three-day yeah. pass. Yeah, one day is enough. Yeah, the just fl- tough out, wait in line for the live-action panel, and just, you'll have plenty of time to walk around and see everything you want afterwards. Yeah, the floor isn't very big, and yeah. uh, there's, there is a lot of cool stuff, but you only need one, yeah, you only need one day to see it. There isn't a, a, a hundred panels going on, so you really it's that one, the movie panel, and then the theme park panel uh, when I went last time those are the two I hit and that was pretty much it I was good after that I was really hoping for some more Star Wars stuff but I mean there's some cool stuff that hotel is cool and all that stuff but I guess maybe they're just not gonna push it too much this year yeah they're probably afraid of showing too much but we're so close anyway like five months away right so it's it's okay I think they showed enough to to not give away anything and 
but enough to get get you excited about the movie. Right. So the the CEO or whoever uh, of Disney, he said he he already watched the movie four times and he he loved it. I, don't know. <laughs> I mean, it's his company, so maybe he's just saying that or he really means it. But, yeah, he says he says it's good. <laughs> That's a, is it, was it Bob Iger? No. No. Who's the other guy? But I, I have to look it up. But yeah, it, it's on him. Okay. Yeah, man, it's cool. Uh, well, you have to go see it four times, though. Because he, he does it so much, because they had to fix it four times. <laughs> <laughs> That's I different. Think a way <laughs> <laughs> Brian, you mentioned our uh, Instagram page. Yeah. Um, so we we just started our Instagram page. To, like So last week I, I posted some stuff from T23. And the handle is PBNJ Show. So PB, the letter N, J, Show. So this weekend, you guys are going to take over and share a bunch of stuff from Comic Con, right? Oh, yeah. I think Jesse, Jesse takes pictures nonstop the whole time we're there. Uh, so I think uh, we'll be filling that page up with a lot of cool stuff. Yeah, I, I, I've always hated uh, Instagram because you can only upload one at a time. But you guys said I can do more now. So I'll, I'll take responsibility for the social uploads. And then if take, Je- if Jesse gets kicked out of some places, I'll take over. Just make sure they record it so that way we can put this is what to avoid. Next video. <laughs> I'm just taking one for the team, right? Yeah. Just, just so that <laughs> and then uh, show up. and our um, our Twitter handle, right? Is that the same at PB and J Show? Yeah, it's the same thing uh, for Twitter. Yeah, so check those out, guys. Uh, we'll be uploading all week at Comic Con. Uh, we'll be down there starting tomorrow, so we'll be uploading tons of cool pictures and videos. Uh, and any breaking news we we hear, we'll be we'll be uh, sending out on Twitter and Instagram. And then just to uh, let everybody else know, we are doing not just because most of you are watching us on the YouTube channel, uh, but we've also expanded over to the iTunes and the Google Play uh, for the podcast. So we're we're on there. If you want to check our links out, like if you want to, if you want to search us. You can go to the YouTube about uh, in our channel, and I have the links there. Yeah, so uh, I think that's it. I think that's it for tonight. Um, stay tuned. Next week, we'll be uh, not only doing our Comic-Con recap, but also Game of Thrones Episode 2 recap. So make sure to stay tuned and uh, listen for those. Anything else you guys want to throw in there? Yeah, bring me back some swag. <laughs> we'll bring it back and then mail it to San Francisco. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, that's it for us. 